Hey, this is Joe Begley here, and today I'm going to teach you how to find the longest string in an array. The so first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare a function. It's going to be called function, and we're going to say longest string. It's going to take an array as an argument. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to declare what the longest string is. So we're going to say let longest equal an empty string, because we haven't tested anything yet. So then we're going to go through and we're going to map the array. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with this, the map function basically just takes every element of the array and executes a function on it. Now, if you pass an argument in this one, in this case, we're going to say the string is an argument. And no matter what, if you pass an argument into the function, that argument is going to be the element in the array that we're iterating through. So what we do is we say string, I'll just show you this just to illustrate the concept console.log longest string we are strings okay so let's take a look at it okay so it goes through and it illustrates every single element in the array. It logs it to the console. We don't want to log it to the console, though. What we want to do is we're going to say if string.length is greater than longest.length, longest is equal to the string. So what's going on here is we're running through the array. We're listing through every element, which is a string. We're seeing if the length of that string is longer than the current longest string. And if it is longest, then that's the current longest string. We'll set it equal to longest. So now we'll go through and we will return longest. Now this is a completely valid approach, but with something as short as this, I like to see if we can do it in one line of JavaScript. So I'm gonna set a constant. I'm gonna say longest string and I'm going to say longest string one line. Yeah, that's a bad name, but whatever. And it's going to take an array as an argument. Now, if we want to find the longest string in here, we're going to have to iterate through this, and I prefer to use the map dot reduce function. So, or the um, the dot reduce. So we're going to say dot reduce. So what you do with the reduce function is you put in two values. One we'll call the base value, and the other we'll call the element. And this is just sort of my language for this. But what happens is you get the base value, and with every single element in the array, it does something and compares it to the base in some way. And then at the end, it returns the value that you put right here. So let me explain this in sort of a, a more concise and easier to understand way. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a boolean here, um, a tertiary boolean. I know that sounds fancy, but just bear with me for a second. We're going to say base dot length. We're going to say element dot length greater than base dot length. We're going to say if that happens, element. base. So you're going to be like, what is that JavaScript all about? Well, I'll tell you. So it goes through for every element in the array, it compares this to this, and at the end of it, it sets the base equal to whatever this returns. So this line of code is executed for every single element in the array. So what it's going to do the first time is at the beginning, base is undefined, and we go through and we put we through this. So it goes through element is equal to we, base is undefined, element's length is greater than undefined, so it sets it equal to the element. Then it goes through and it goes r. r has a length of 3, again the element's length is 2, or the element's length is 3, the base's length is 2, that's bigger, and then so it sets it equal to element. Then it goes through string's length is 7, and that's greater than the base's length, so it sets it equal to the element. Let's test this out.
strings. And just to make sure it's not returning the last element in the array, let's put another word in there. We'll just say duh, we are strings Dutch, still should return string. And it does, so this works great. Just to reiterate, I know my explanation of reduce was probably not the most concise and clear. And it takes a while to understand something as complicated as this. So I'll explain it one more time. Reduce goes through and it executes this code for every single element in the array. So we have a base value, which in this case is undefined. You can define it if you would like. We could define it over here. So I could say base is equal to zero. You can set a value in the arguments, which again, I know I'm adding more fuel to the fire in terms of confusion here, but bear with me. So let's set base equal to an empty string, just to sort of clarify things a little bit. Base is equal to an empty string. Element is every element in the array, because that's what reduce does. So it goes to the first element, it says we, which has a length of two. So this evaluates to true because the length of two is greater than the length of zero. If it's true, it sets element equal to the value on the left. If it's false, it sets it equal to the value on the right. So we go we, it's equal to we now. So now base is we, we get to the next one. R is the element. It goes through, the length of R is greater than the base, so now it's R. The length of strings is greater than the base, so we set it to strings. And then the length of duh is not greater, so it stays equal to strings. I know this is confusing, and um, this is sort of an early tutorial for me. This is the fourth one I've done in my life. I'm hoping to get better at explaining things that are a little confusing, like reduce. So let me know if I did a good job here. Let me know in the comments. Um, if I did well, give me an update and subscribe. If I did a terrible job, uh, please call me a moron in the comments and give me a downvote. Thank you very much. I appreciate you tuning in.